An independent National Electoral Commission annex says it may respond to some of the issues raised by the Biosa State Governorship Elections Petitions Tribunal when it is availed of the full judgment of the case. The ANEC National Commissioner and Chairman Information and Voter Education Committee, Festus Okoye, stated this in an interview on Monday in Abuja. The commission was reacting to the nullification of the state's governorship's election, which produced Dwoye Diri. Okoye, however, noted that the advanced Nigeria Democratic Party ANDP nomination for the election was invalid, while the party did not exercise its rights guaranteed in the fourth alteration to the constitution by filing its suit within 14 days to the accrual of the said right. Okoye recalled that the ANDP was one of the political parties that signified its intention to contest the November 16, 2019 Biosa governorship election. According to him, the party conducted party primaries and submitted the name of one Peter David as its deputy governorship candidate. And now joining us, uh, Bolanle Olubani and Obi Ajegbo, legal practitioners, uh, to discuss this uh, tribunal judgment. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. I'm going to start with Mr. Lubani. Just three days ago, the same tribunal dismissed the petition of some parties challenging Governor Diri's victory. And now, the victory is cancelled and re-election has been ordered. Help us understand the implication of this. Well, what I see that has been done is that uh, the, the tribunal has upheld the provision of the constitution. The fundamental principle of natural justice enshrined in the constitution of Nigeria in section 36 that uh, says that all courts and every citizen is entitled to a fair hearing in all courts and tribunals in nigeria and that um, that principle is grounded or founded in the principle of all the aterrant pattern fair hearing so um if somebody says he's been excluded from an election unjustly uh, the court or tribunal must make a finding that that person is not entitled to be excluded and for him to be included the exercise or election that was held before will be set aside okay and, and also you know i next decision and it, this seems to be happening one more time has been an exercise has been flawed for disqualifying a candidate who was reported uh, to be ineligible to contest based on age. Why, why is that unlawful? Well, we know that the laws of this country have been amended. I consider this quote and unquote ger gerontocratic law that seeks to put a limit on the age of those who can contest oppositions in Nigeria you know, to be something that is not positive. In the era of military rule in Nigeria, we have military governors in their 20s and early 30s, head of states in their very, very early 30s. Why in a democratic dispensation are you limiting the age for contesting for governor to 35 and president to 40? Does age confer wisdom? The age of Methuselah cannot be compared with the wisdom of Solomon. So what are they talking about? So that law in itself has created this problem. And I believe there's also some people who, you know, our quarters who believe that this is an opportunity for the APC to stage a comeback. Do you believe that the APC can participate having been excluded based on false declaration by its deputy governorship candidate? Will they be allowed back into the, 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 the election? Yes, I think so. If they can uh, do the normal thing or, the, or engage the normal process of nominating new candidates. Their former candidates were flawed and there's a decision of the court or tribunal to that effect. So if they can, before the 90 days, prescribed by this ruling or judgment of the court, bring up new candidates, I'm sure they'll be eligible to contest. Okay, we'll see how that turns out. But this is another uh, time when our elections, uh, you know, have come with a barrage of litigations um, where we have once again seen an election being upturned. Do you think it's, you know, it's, it's almost impossible for the process to be largely credible? Or, do you, or, you know, do we have issues with the laws not being, you know, ambiguous enough? 
Well, I think that we need to go to the foundation. A system that says you must belong to a political party to be eligible to contest. A system that says that you must be of a certain age before you can contest for a certain position is flawed at the initial. Right from the foundation, there are issues. Why is there no independent candidature? Why is there an age limit on any position? Once you are an adult, you are 18, as prescribed by the Constitution, you should be able to contest for any position. What you need to do is to convince the voters of your electoral manifesto and your ability to deliver on them in an environment where you are sure that you are going there for the benefit of the people who voted you and the general masses. So, I mean, fundamentally, we are suffering from a hangover of a, of a, of a constitution that was handed over to us, midwife by the military. It's a military hangover. It's all the provisions of our laws. And people with a military mindset who have uh, been orientated by the military dispensation, and many of them who are participating in our democracy today were former military officers or party leaders who have military orientation. They want to dictate everything. We have a problem that has to be corrected from the foundation. I, I, so I, I want you to speak on what you think would play out um, between now and you know, the 90-day period. Um, of course, the governor has decided that he will appeal. How do you see that turning out? Well, the appeal that will be carried out by those who are affected by the outcome of the judgment, that is, the governor of Bayelsa State, uh, is provided for under our laws. The outcome of a judicial decision or a judgment that affects an interested party who was, who was not a part of the initial trial can be appealed if that person files an application to be joined as an interested party so that he will now convert his argument that though he was not part of those who were sued, he has an interest that has been affected and he needs to be heard. His own fundamental right to fair hearing as enshrined in Section 36 of the Constitution must also be accommodated so he can file an appeal. But your right to a constitutional provision does not also deny the party who filed the suit in the tribunal of first instance from fair hearing. So ultimately, the fair hearing of the two, the party who won at the lower tribunal and the one who is appealing is is that the two of them deserve fair hearing. I see the appeal court upholding the lower tribunal decision and saying they should, that they are both entitled to fair hearing and that the election should be held again. All right. The, the, the governor filing an appeal, and of course, even INEC says it will study the full judgment and also possibly appeal. What do you think that INEC may be seeking? Well, I think that a, a disqualification of the person who filed the suit against INEC was not the right approach. I think that the, the disqualification based on age should have been done by a tribunal. INEC should have first gone to court to ask the tribunal to, to, de to declare that that person is not eligible by the laws of this country to contest, having not attained the age of 35, to contest for the governorship of Bayelsa State. Not a unilateral, almost dictatorial disqualification of the person before the election. All right, thank you so much, uh, Barrister Bolanle Olubani, for sharing with us. We hope to speak with you again. Thank you very much.